All right. Well, where do you want to start? Uh, so a little bit of history. The ZFS was originally developed by Sun Microsystems, which is now owned by Oracle, yeah. uh, to be the first file system that would be able to store a zettabyte of information. <laughs> Hence the ZFS part. Yes. Uh, and just for reference, a zettabyte is one billion terabytes. Uh, the advantage to this is it allows the volume manager to change things and the file system adapts automatically. Right. Very integrated approach. Uh, so it gives it some unique benefits, including the ability that as you add more disks, the free space just appears in your array automatically. You don't have to resize the file system or anything. So no formatting, no backing up right. your data, readjusting right. partition size, and then restoring everything. Yeah. And uh, it also improves performance uh, because some processes like scrub, which is the integrity check, we'll talk a little bit more in a minute, and uh, resilvering. For example, when you have a RAID 5 array and one of the disks dies, when you pop it out and pop in a different disk, it has to rewrite the entire disk, everything that was on the original disk, yeah. bit for bit. Yeah. Now, so half of those bits maybe were not used, right? Well, because ZFS is the volume manager and the file system, it knows which bits were used and only oh, has to write sweet. the ones that were used. So Huge it means time re saver. your recovery time from a RAID failure is much, much faster. Another thing is that ZFS, uh, because it, it works a little different, it has these pools, and then you create your volumes on top of those and so on. Uh, your mount points, or data sets as they're called, uh, can actually share the same storage pool. So you can create two or three different mount points, which is what most people would think of as partitions, all of which share this common storage pool. So if you would put a bunch of disks in your computer and say you have five terabytes of, of space in total, that means you get five different partitions. You can make as many different partitions as you want. Each one has five terabytes of space free. They all think they have all the available space. Right. And then as you use up space in one, it disappears from all of them. So another advantage of ZFS is it does copy on write. Copy uh, so that on means write. So every time you change data, it doesn't overwrite the old version of the data. It, it saves that new data to a new place. Ah, revisions. Uh, so that data is not immediately overwritten. Uh, so there's a little more fault tolerance there. Hmm. Uh, but eventually, that data will be recycled. How does that, how that, does that, that not have a performance impact, though? Because then aren't you doing... It has a little bit, but at the same time, it means you can spread it out across your disk better. Uh, so some of the other important features are passive integrity checking. This is I don't know of any other file systems that do this. So basically, every time data is written, uh, it takes a checksum of the data. Like, well, depending on your setting, it's either a, a Fletcher checksum or an SSH2 hash, which is like SSH256. Uh, and it, so it, it hashes the data, and it stores that plus the regular metadata for the file, like the size and access time and so on. And then that is hashed as well. Huh. And it, so it ends up with this Merkle tree of hashes. Yeah. Uh, but... What that means is every time the data is read, it's compared against that checksum or hash. The hash is more secure, but the checksum is faster. So, it's so for every read, it's doing a hash compare? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. And then, so what it does then is it can tell if the data is changed or corrupted. Right, uh, of course. Because drives will have silent errors. Like, the drives are correcting a lot of errors every second as, you're, as it's reading data. Mm -hmm. But um, it misses some of them. And so, and so do other file systems. And so ZFS will actually detect these. In real time. And then, yes. And then when it, if it doesn't detect one, then it just passes the data to the app like normal. Uh, if the data is found to be corrupt, ZFS will attempt to recover it. If you have set up uh, mirroring or RAID Z or anything like that, then it can just go to one of the other disks and get a copy, and it'll send that to the user as it, they requested it, but it'll also fix the corrupt version on the disk that was broken. It also supports RAID Z, which is uh, very, so RAID Z is basically RAID 5, but done with ZFS instead of having to require a hardware RAID controller. Uh, so then on top of RAID Z, they have RAID Z 2, which is basically RAID 6. So you have two drives for parity instead of one. Mm. Uh, and also in, uh, f uh, just recently, they announced RAID Z 3, which allows you to have three parity drives, which seems like a lot. But you have to consider with ZFS, you're not limited like you were before with how many disks you can have. 
So if you have a RAID set that's like 48 discs, you need to be able to withstand more than two of those drives failing at once. Right, right. That becomes more, the more discs you add, the more possibility. Yeah. Uh, okay. And so the other thing RAID Z supports is hot spares. Okay. Uh, including nice. shared spares. So if you have, if your pool may, is made up of a bunch of RAID Z arrays of like five discs each, so if you have like, you know, 10 arrays of five discs each, giving you 50 discs, uh, but 40 discs worth of usable storage. Right. Uh, then you can have a pool of like five spare discs. And then whenever a drive dies, it will automatically swap that spare into that to recover that data. And then when you pull out the faulty drive and put back the replacement drive, it, the spare will resilver back to the original drive, to the correct drive, and the spare will go back in the pool to be used as a spare. Oh, that's nice. That's really nice. So the spares are temporary, not permanent. So uh, some of the other features it has are compression. So it allows you to compress the data as it's stored in the file system. I like this. But this is a setting per data set or mount point. So for example, you can say compress bar log, but don't compress bar database. Sure. Uh, and it defaults to LZJB compression, which is faster, but you can also choose GZIP. For example, your logs, maybe you want them gzip. Right. Uh, and then you can choose between gzip 1, which is fastest, and 9, which is slowest. Uh, the other thing, one of the, the most popular features, uh, which is only available in the newer versions, for example, you have to have FreeBSD 9 or greater to do this, is deduplication. Oh, yeah. Uh, since ZFS already knows the checksum or the hash of every file as it writes it, it can detect when a file already exists on the disk somewhere. So when you save, for example, the same file a second time, it'll say, hey, this has the same hash. Why save it when I can just, I just mark it as a link to that original file? Isn't this kind of how Dropbox does it? Yes. So, there, so ZFS is like an implementation of what of Dropbox that, is doing in the back end. That deduplication system, yes. Yeah. Uh, now, you basically have the two options here. Uh, you can do uh, the checksum, which is Fletcher, uh, which is faster, but there's the chance of a collision, right? Two files having the same checksum, but uh, not having the same content. Interesting. So that can be a stability thing. Or you can use SSA256. If you do that, the chance of a, clash, a, a hash collision are two to the power of negative 77, which Whoa. is 0 0.770 is one chance of it happening, which yeah. you had it up on the screen there. It's a really long number. Yeah, yeah. Uh, now, there's a second setting for deduplication called verify. And so what that does is even if the hashes do match, before it does deduplication, it will do a bit-by-bit -bit comparison of the files and make absolutely sure they're the same before it deduplicates them. You got What else uh, we got? The, the opposite feature is purposeful duplication. Oh, purposeful. Copies. Uh, so basically... As a property of a mount point, you can say, uh, maintain more than one copy of this file. So, for example, all the files in my home directory, I can say copies equals three. So instead of just keeping one copy of each file in my home directory, it actually stores each file three times. Uh, so what it tries to do is it, it tries to store them on different disks. So each of the three copies will be stored to a different disk, unless they don't have three disks. Then it stores it to two different places on the same disk. Man, that's smart. Uh, so this provides some of the redundancy you would get from like mirroring or RAID Z, uh, although it's not recommended that you use it instead of RAID Z. It also has a lot of different layers. Uh, for example, there's like two layers of cache. It has the ARC, which is its memory cache. Or it stores like a lot of this metadata in memory. In RAM, okay. Uh, for example, deduplication specifically takes a lot of memory because it actually keeps a table of like every hash that it knows exists uh, in memory. So basically, it takes two or three hundred and twenty bytes for every block of data on your hard drive. And then separately, it has another cache called uh, the ZIL, the ZFS Intent Log, and that is a write cache. Mm. So. What it does is when you go to write a big chunk of data randomly all over your hard drive or whatever, it buffers all that to NVRAM or an SSD or whatever. And then it can 
flush it out to the actual hard drives later. And then it has snapshots, which are yeah. just like a lot of things have, right? It's a read-only copy of the file system from a specific point in time. And again, that's where the copy on write comes in. When you take a snapshot, all those blocks are marked as being used in two places, the original copy and the snapshot. Right. So if you change any of the data that was in the snapshot, then that gets copied to a new place, and that's where your newer copy references. Mm -hmm. And that leaves your snapshot as a perfect you know, snapshot in time. Then it, it has a feature most other systems don't, which is a clone. A clone is a snapshot, except for it's one you can write to. This is interesting. So you yeah. can take like the contents of a drive, make an exact copy of it, and then mount it as like another... Well, it wouldn't be drive. a drive, but a, a data set. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's what I meant. Yeah. The other thing is dynamic striping. Uh, so if you're using just ZFS without any redundancy, you're just pooling all your hard drives into one big chunk of space. Uh, when you add another drive, it will, uh, ZFS will change its stripe size so that it takes advantage of that extra drive and you'll get the additional write performance of having that many more disks. Oh, that's cool. So it allows you to add drives at any time. If you want Drobo-like functionality where you can just add more drives and or swap out your smaller drives, yes. all you got to do, uh, if you don't have any redundancy, if you have redundancy, you can just swap out a drive with a bigger one. Right, so if you're using like a RAID Z pool of say right now it's five 500 gig hard drives. Mm -hmm. If you decide I need more space, I'm going to buy five two terabyte drives. Okay, then you just pull out the one drive and pop in a new uh, two terabyte one. Wait for it to resilver. Once the array is back to working, do the next drive. And once you've done all five drives, it'll be like, hey, the smallest drive in this array is now two terabytes instead of 500 gigabytes. And now all of a sudden your array goes from two terabytes of usable space to eight. Ah, oh, that is very Drobo-like. Yeah. If you're just jumbling all your disks together, yeah. then what you have to do is, when you build it, you want to keep at least one SATA port available on the file server. Okay. Right? Then you take the first of the new drives and plug it into the system and boot it up or whatever, and you pick one of your small drives you want to replace. And there's a Z, Z, uh, Z pool command called replace. And you literally say, replace this drive in the array with this one. Oh, nice. You can so actually choose. copy all the data from like your old 200, terab or 200 gigabyte drive, copy it all to the 2 terabyte drive, and swap that 2 terabyte drive in the array. Now the 200 is unused. Uh -huh. So you can pull it out, and now that's your free SATA port. And right. you pop in another drive. Right. ZFS has built-in support for Samba, NFS, and iSCSI. What do you mean built-in? Like, it's part of ZFS. You don't, it doesn't even require, like, you don't have to install Samba. They have their own implementation built into ZFS. What? Are you and serious? they have NFS v4, so if your operating system only has v3, you can do v4 as well. You're saying now, the file server can be, you're saying, wait a minute, you're saying the file system is its own file server? Yes. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of TechSnap, and we'll see you right back here next week. <laughs>